Hey everybody, welcome to today's webinar on the Cool Tool Roundup, where we provide insight into some of the apps and tools available through the WHA Virtual Library. My name is Nicole, I'm one of the librarians with the WHA Virtual Library. This session is being recorded and will be available to you after the presentation, along with a copy of the slides. If at any point you have any questions, please feel free to enter them into the question box. With that, let's get started. So today's objectives, we're going to introduce the WHA Virtual Library and its services for those of you who might not be familiar with us. We're going to demonstrate where to find the apps and tools page on our website. And we're going to discuss free and subscription tools available to support your research and practice through the WHA Virtual Library. So for those of you who might not know, the WHA Virtual Library provides access to electronic resources and library services for WHA staff, eligible community health agencies, and eligible personal care homes. We provide a wide range of electronic resources, including databases, journals, and ebooks. And we also provide a set of library services. These include literature searches, where we will do the research on your behalf and send you a list of results on a topic of interest. Document delivery, which allows you to get access to any resources that might not be available in our collection, as well as education and training sessions like this one. We run a regular webinar series, and we're always also happy to do one on one education if you need. So this is our library website. I definitely recommend you guys bookmark that link down at the bottom left hand corner of your screen there, libguides.lib.umanitoba.ca slash WHA. This site is where you will find all of our resources and information about the services that we offer. It's also where we'll find the cool tools and apps that we're going to be talking about today. So under our resources menu, you'll see a section for apps and tools. Some of our tools have specific pages devoted to them, such as UpToDate, Clinical Key, LexiComp, and Read. But today we're going to be focusing on the All Apps and Tools page. If you take a look at this page, you'll see that there are a lot of resources available here. We're not going to cover all of them in detail today, but we're going to provide you with an overview of some of the categories and key resources that are available. So our first category is our point of care tools. These are tools that are intended to be useful for you at the bedside with a patient or with a family member. First one on this list is up to date. Up to date is a very popular point of care tool. It's available for free for everyone in the province, even those who aren't affiliated with the WHA. And it provides clinical summaries. It provides uh, diagnostic and therapeutic information about particular conditions and patient populations, as well as other tools like calculators, patient education materials, and things like that. It's a very helpful resource. Uh, in order to access up to date, you first need to log into the desktop version, either through the WHA proxy uh, through our library or from a WHA IP address. Once you've done that and set up a personal account, you'll then be able to get full access to the mobile version. You just have to renew it every three months. Next option on this list here is Clinical Key. Clinical Key provides access to a wide range of journal articles, uh, textbooks, as well as procedure videos and patient education materials in a variety of languages. So procedure videos are really helpful in seeing how a particular procedure is done, either for your own knowledge or to be able to help explain it to a patient or family member. And then those patient education materials in languages other than English can be really helpful uh, to explain what's going on. Access Medicine also has a number of textbooks, but some of the cool things available through this tool are the lovely named Diagnosaurus, which is a tool that allows you to search by body part or symptom in order to better diagnose a patient. It also has a atlas of dermatological conditions. So if you see a patient in front of you who has a rash and you're not able to identify it, you can quickly compare an image to see whether it matches up. So it can be really helpful for diagnosis. The final resource we're recommending in this category is a little bit different. It's called Canopy Speak. And what this is, it's a translation app that's specifically designed for medical related questions and answers. So it doesn't replace interpreter services, but it can be really helpful in helping you to communicate quickly with patients or family members who may speak a language other than English. So our next category of app and tool is keeping current. We know that there is a lot of research literature published every day, and it can be very challenging to keep up to date on the research in your particular topic area. So we have a few different tools in this area to help you out with that. 
uh, Browsing and Read by QXMD are both great tools, uh, both very similar in terms of what they cover. Browsing is more journal focused, so you can set up a uh, a bookshelf of different journals that you'd like to follow and then be updated whenever they publish a new edition. Read is more article focused. It draws from PubMed and provides access to different articles that you can share and annotate. Uh, so uh, Read is more article focused and allows for a more nuanced approach to a search. Whereas browsing, although it's more journal focused, it also includes information outside the realm of health sciences. So if you have a particular area of interest that's not health related, that can be a great tool for you. We also have our search alert service. So what this is, is in many different databases like PubMed or CINAHL or anything like that, you can set up an alert that will automatically email you new results as they are published on a topic of your interest. So we're happy to help you set up these alerts in order to help you keep up to date on literature. And then those results will be pushed to your inbox on a schedule that suits you, whether that's monthly or weekly, what have you. So if you have any questions about this, we have um, a couple of videos on our website that show you how to do this yourself, or we're also happy to help you do it. Our next category of resources are our search tools. So these are tools that are designed to help simplify the process of getting access to resources. Uh, LibKey is a web-based tool, so it's basically a search box in which you can enter a DOI, which is a digital object identifier associated with many journal articles, or a PMID, which is a PubMed identifier. So you enter either of those numbers in a search box, and LibKey will search our resources and return for you a link to the full text access of that resource if we have it. You can also return a link to the article in context, meaning within the journal itself using a connection to browsing. And then if we don't happen to have a particular article, it can provide you with a one-click way of ordering it through our document delivery service. So that can really help you simplify the process of getting access to the, to the resource. Lipkey Nomad is their uh, portable version. So this is a browser extension that you can install on your machine. And then whenever you're browsing the web, whether it's through Google or through a link that someone's happened to send you, you'll get a little pop-up that shows you whether this resource is available. And again, you can just click through for one-click access to full text if we have this result, or one-click access to our order sources option if we don't. So that can really help you to streamline getting access to an article without needing to search each individual one through our website. Open Access Helper, similar sort of idea. It comes as either a browser extension or this particular item has an app option if you're looking for something that's mobile friendly. This allows you to quickly get access to full text through the library or for this uh, Open Access Helper, they also provide access to open access versions of articles. So sometimes you'll see people will deposit a version of the article on their personal website or their institutional repository or subject repository. Those get indexed and those get served to you through this tool. So it can help you find not only stuff that's available through the library, but stuff that's available for free online that you might not otherwise have found. The final option in this category that I'd like to highlight today is the Google Scholar Library Links. So this is an option for you if you like to use Google Scholar as a search tool. Basically what you do here is you set up WHA Virtual Library as your preferred library for Google Scholar. You can actually set more than one library. So if you also have access to U of M or another library, you can set those up as well. And then when you're searching Google Scholar, you'll see a quick link on the side of your page that directs you to the library catalog for items that we subscribe to. So you can just quickly click through, get to full text from Google Scholar. So that can be really useful for you as well. Our next category of resource is our drug resources. Now there are lots of different resources available and I'd like to highlight a couple here today. They are Lexicomp Mobile and CPS Mobile. So Lexicomp is a very broad drug database. It provides drug monographs as well as patient information, calculators, all sorts of different drug interaction checker tools and also a pill identifier. So if you're in a situation where you have an unknown medication, it, that can help you try to figure out what exactly that medication is, even if there's not a pharmaceutical label associated with it. CPS Mobile, very similar sort of idea. They also have monographs. 
They also include a pill checker that helps you identify a medication. It's just a Canadian version of this resource. So this will be Canadian specific regulations as well as a number of different therapeutic choices that are Canada specific. So that can be really helpful in terms of figuring out what local practices are, what is appropriate for Canadian specific um, drug information. Both of these are subscriptions that are available through the WHA Virtual Library. Uh, for both of them, you do need to create an account and then set up a mobile access code. And there are instructions to, on how to do that on the website. Definitely recommend checking that out. Speaking of calculators, a lot of our different tools do provide different kinds of medical calculators. These can be really th simple things like conversions from imperial to metric or vice versa to more complex calculations like drug dosages or uh, specific clinical tools that can help you calculate risk or other things like that. So UpToDate is a very broad resource in this category. It includes a lot of different uh, types of clinical calculators. Lexicomp is more focused. It's a lot uh, more drug specific, although they do have a few things that are not drug related, but definitely a great place to look for dosage calculations and that sort of thing. Clinical key, again, a very broad resource. It can be really helpful for, it actually does uh, calculations for you. If you enter in the numbers, you can quickly get a result. And then finally, QX Calculate. So unlike the other options we've listed here, QX Calculate is not a subscription resource. It's available for free to anyone. But the advantage of this particular tool is it's specifically a calculator tool, whereas these other options include a lot of different things, which can be great, but sometimes you just want a calculator. So QX Calculate is just a clinical calculator app. It includes about 100 different, 200 actually different clinical calculators, all sorts of different topics. So it can be a great resource for you when you're working um, at a point of care and you just want a quick calculation. Our next area is professional development. So I've got a variety of options here depending on what your specific needs are. Up to date has continuing medical education options that are accredited by the Royal Canadian College of Surgeons. Um, so if you create an account with Up to Date, you can track your continuing medical education through there and actually get it accredited. JN Listen is not accredited through. Canadian sources as far as I'm aware, but it does provide an audio CME option that allows you to listen to like a podcast on a specific medical topic that might be of interest to you. It's definitely not the only podcast CME that's out there, but this is definitely a great one. It's very broad and focused and it's um, from JAMA, which is a very reliable source for medical information. And then the final option I've included here is more of a fun option. This is Canopy. Canopy is available to anyone in Winnipeg through the Winnipeg Public Library. And it provides documentary videos. It's particularly strong in the areas of mental health, nursing, and midwifery, but it also includes some general sports fitness and health and wellness resources. So definitely a fun source to check out for more of a casual approach to learning and professional development in terms of documentary video. Reference management will be of particular interest to you if you do a lot of research, if you're writing for publication and you need to format a bibliography, or if you just want to keep track of citations. These are both free options, Zotero and Mendeley, that we support through the WHA Virtual Library. Zotero is one that I use personally myself. It's great for managing a variety of types of sources, and it's also excellent in collaborating. Mendeley, on the other hand, is best known for its PDF specific uh, management. It's very good at annotating and storing and managing PDFs. And it also has the ability to um, store more resources than Zotero does in the free tier. Both of these have a paid tier if you need more storage. I personally have never needed it, but if you do a lot of research, you might run into that situation. So that is an option, but by default, both of these are free resources and they're excellent for things like managing bibliographies, keeping track of citations, and then when you go to publish something, formatting all your citations rather than having to do it by hand. So we haven't covered every app that's available out there, uh, but if you do want to get more information about a particular app, I definitely recommend as a resource for you, my medical apps. This is a health and medicine specific uh, review site that looks at different medical apps and reviews them and provides information about how appropriate they are for clinical practice or for patient use. So definitely a great resource for you if you're looking for more apps that are might be out there. 
We've also previously done a webinar on evaluating apps. So if you're looking at an app and you're not sure of the quality, I would definitely recommend checking that out as a resource to help you be able to critically assess the app and understand whether it's appropriate for your use. And of course, if you have any questions, please feel free to get in touch with us. We're always happy to help support you in finding specific resources that meet your needs. So that brings us to the end of the presentation. Uh, we have plenty of time left for questions if anyone should have any. You can also get in touch with us either through the WHA Virtual Library in general or myself specifically. My contact information is up here on this slide. As I said, this presentation has been recorded and it will be available for you in within a day or two, along with a copy of the slides. Um, so please feel free to ask any questions that you might have. Or if you need to follow up regarding specific resources that might be useful for you, please feel free to do that as well. We're always happy to help. Thanks for joining today's webinar and I hope you have a lovely day.